Over the course of eight seasons, Evan Peters has played some of the most iconic characters in American Horror Story. Unfortunately, he's also had some pretty forgettable roles. As we prepare for Evan's return to the series for season 10, let's rank his AHS characters from absolute worst to the very best. Spoilers ahead. We begin with Evan's most recent appearance on the show, which is sadly also his most forgettable. My name is Jeff. Jeff Fister in Apocalypse, one half of the Dumb and Dumber billionaires that sold their souls to the devil in an attempt to end the world. Bottom line, Jeff and Mutt are the worst. All of this just needs to end. To be fair, Evan didn't have much to work with here. Jeff is immature, irritating, and obviously irredeemable. His airtime was sparse, which is a good thing because Jeff is pretty much one note. The character lacked any depth for the audience to feel anything more than hatred for him. I should probably mention here that the Canaros Robotics engineers were responsible for the deaths of over 7 billion people. Like I said, irredeemable. It's super fun when an AHS veteran like Evan returns for a season, even if it's for a smaller role, but we feel that Evan's range as an actor was completely wasted here. Number 10, Rory Monahan. We'll give Evan a break here because he was pulling double duty this season of Roanoke. Similar to his role as Jeff, Evan really didn't have much to work with here besides providing some comedic relief. Suck it, f***er, we're hitched! In fact, this is perhaps Evan's lightest and most carefree role on the series. Rory doesn't have many redeeming qualities. He cares more about himself and his acting career than anything else. That includes his wife, Audrey Tyndale. He's one of the handful of over-the-top Hollywood cliches we meet in the very meta season of Roanoke. That ridiculous wedding footage might be Rory's most memorable moment from the show. You are the color of the sun. <laughs> so bright and hot. <laughs> so hot. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Actually, who am I kidding? It's gotta be his horrific death at the hands of those murderous nurses. Speaking of silly and self-centered characters, let's talk about Mr. Gallant from Apocalypse. Sure, the flamboyant hairdresser was fun, but he was yet another one-note role for Peters. Mr. Gallant wasn't all that complex, and we wish he would have been fleshed out a bit better. I love Halloween. It's the one day of the year when the rest of the world puts in some effort to be fabulous like I am every other day. The problem is, he gets killed off pretty early into the season. But that's not before he kills his actual grandmother. It's not entirely his fault though, Satan was playing some mind tricks on him, and Mr. Gallant thought that he was killing Rubberman. Ultimately, we wish we could have spent more time with Mr. Gallant in order to fully develop his character. In fact, what if Evan ditched the bowl cut role and we just got more of Mr. Gallant this season? We can't complain too much though, Mr. Gallant was involved in one of the season's and series' best moments. I think you know what I mean. All the stew is Next up, Edward Philippe Mott from Roanoke, which marked yet another season of double duty for Evan. Now, as opposed to Rory, Mr. Mott was a bit more interesting as a character, but unfortunately, he also suffered similarly from the lack of character development. He also didn't have nearly enough screen time. Now, the role did reveal some fun background on the Mott family who we were first introduced to in glorious fashion back in Freak Show. Edward, a wealthy socialite and art lover, was the original owner of the Big Shaker Mansion. He treated everyone in his orbit horribly. You will stay there until the murderer confesses his crime! The pattern continues with this role as Mott is killed off rather quickly after his arrival. Much like Rory, Edward's death at the hands of the Lost Colony was his most memorable moment. But Edward was maybe a little bit nicer than some of his family members. He actually redeems himself to some extent by helping Matt, Shelby, and Flora escape from the haunted mansion later in the season. That brings us to Coven's Kyle Spencer a character that started out strong, but turned into something completely different. It's as if the writers struggled to successfully fit Evan Peters' role into the overall story. We get it, there's a lot going on in Coven. Kyle's story is extremely tragic. He was a charismatic, caring, and genuine good guy before being killed by Madison Montgomery at that fateful frat party. Of course, she was raped by a handful of his frat brothers, which he attempted to stop. After fleeing the scene, Madison uses her powers to get some revenge. But Kyle is soon resurrected and becomes a Franken-Zombie Kyle. 
For the remainder of the season, Kyle is a shell of his former self, literally. One moment he's catatonic, the next he's having a coven threesome, and another strangling Madison Montgomery to death. Oh, and he also just kills an innocent homeless guy? We also learn that Kyle was a victim of sexual abuse at home, making his entire story exponentially tragic. His romantic relationship and devotion to Zoe served as a delightful detour and emotional backdrop for the season. And by the end of Coven, Kyle finds his place among the witches as their new butler. But we were still left wishing that we had more than a one-dimensional Kyle. At number six on this list, I'm clumping together all six of the bonus characters that Evan Peters played during season seven of Colt. That of course includes Andy Warhol, Marshall Applewhite, David Koresh, Jim Jones, Charles Manson, and of course, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That happened. Now, obviously none of this works without stellar work by the costume design, hair and makeup, as well as prosthetics teams, but Peters replicated each one of these personalities exceptionally. He clearly did hours and hours of research. Don't believe me? Find some original footage of some of these cult leaders and then go back and watch Peters' performances. What's even more impressive, Peters pulled off these performances all while juggling the demanding role of Kai Anderson. We'll get to him in a bit. But first, let's check out The Freak Show. Jimmy Darling is yet another tragic character that Peters brought to life. The good news here is that Jimmy's story is one of the highlights of season four. See, Jimmy was taken advantage of his entire life. Since birth, he was exploited for his physical deformity, which led others to dub him Lobster Boy. Along with his fellow freaks, Jimmy was shunned by society and treated less than human. Even his own father abandoned him at a young age. But despite these challenges, Jimmy rose to the occasion, becoming the champion that his friends needed most. He never lost faith or love in mankind, regardless of how horribly he was treated. In a season filled to the brim with reprehensible characters, Jimmy was a truly genuine soul and the moral compass of the season. But that doesn't mean he didn't get his hands dirty. Don't call us freaks! I will call you whatever the hell I want to, you freaks! <laughs> Even when things hit rock bottom, like really rock bottom, Jimmy still bounced back, overcame all obstacles, and earned a well-deserved ending to his story. In fact, I wonder how Jimmy, Bet and Dot are doing today. That brings us to yet another unforgivable soul, Hotel's James Patrick March, who just might be the most evil character Evan Peters has ever portrayed on American Horror Story. Whereas Tate Langdon towed the line between good and evil, but mostly evil, Mr. March was a completely unhinged serial killer. A man is only as good as his word. The whole reason James built the Hotel Cortez from the ground up was to help cover up his murderous escapades. He was so prolific, in fact, that even the most sinister serial killers themselves, like Richard Ramirez, Eileen Wuornos, and John Wayne Gacy, anointed March their leader. With his sharp appearance and chilling Brahmin accent, March charmed his way through his victims. He would ultimately get caught, but that wouldn't slow him down. Much like the murder house, the hotel allowed March to continue his murderous ways and even inspire a new generation. James March wasn't an extremely complex villain, but Peters sold his sadistic intentions to chilling effect. Next up, Kai Anderson. The seventh season of Colt received mixed reactions, but there's no question that Evan Peters' performance was the highlight of the season. You from the very start of the season to his final scene, Evan captivated us with a complex and charismatic portrayal of the cult leader. Compared to some of his other AHS roles, this truly showed off Evan's range as an actor. Driven by blind rage, Kai was obsessed with accumulating real power by manipulating everyone around him. He was motivated by a tragic backstory, but his mental state would soon unravel. He used the people around him as pawns in his grand scheme and with the drop of a hat could switch between instilling someone with fear or love. What made this performance so great, it was increasingly unpredictable the more you progress throughout the season. Kai always seemed one step ahead of everyone else, and you didn't know which direction he was headed next. As I've mentioned a handful of times on this channel, some of the best moments of the season were when Evan Peters shared scenes with his acting counterpart, Sarah Paulson. The only question we have, how did this performance not get an Emmy nomination? At number two on our list, Evan Peters' first ever role in American Horror Story, the troubled teen, Tate Langdon. I know what you're thinking. You're probably shocked that Tate isn't number one on this list, but let me explain. 
If you examine the Murder House season alone, Tate Langdon is unquestionably one of the most compelling characters from start to finish. When the story begins, the son of Constance Langdon seems harmless, albeit a bit emo, depressed, and disturbed. All of this is for good reason. Constance was far from Mother of the Year. You're a smart girl, you know he killed our brother! Stop it! But then we learn, as does his love interest Violet Harmon, that Tate is actually a ghost trapped inside the walls of the murder house. Even worse, he was killed there after committing a mass shooting at the local high school. In Tate's afterlife, it gets even darker. He torments, tortures, and continues to kill unsuspecting tenants of the house. He also rapes Vivian Harmon while posing as Ben Harmon, and their offspring turns out to be the damn Antichrist. So yes, Tate Langdon is absolutely reprehensible, but Evan's conflicted and chilling performance cemented Tate as one of the season's and series' most iconic characters. But then we return to Murder House in Season 8, aka the Tate Langdon redemption story. This time around, Tate is a loving, patient, and caring young man desperately vying for Violet's attention. Apparently the house itself is evil, which was passed along to Michael Langdon, who was even more evil than Tate, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Not even I could create something as monstrous, as evil as you. So Tate turned over a new leaf, did some good deeds, like saving Vivian from Michael, and thanks to Madison Montgomery, finally got back with his lady. Or so we thought. Thankfully, Mallory reset the timeline at the end of Apocalypse, and Tate is hopefully still in the doghouse. Had the writers passed on Tate's redemption arc in Season 8, this character might be number one on our list. That brings us to our top-ranked Evan Peters performance, and it's none other than Kit Walker. This is arguably the kindest character that Peters, hell anyone, has ever played on American Horror Story. Kit has a little bit of Jimmy Darling in him, a character that was beaten down countless times, but never gave up, fought for his survival, and lifted up those around him. His story begins in 1964, when he and his wife Alma are abducted by aliens. She's nowhere to be found, and the police believe that he's the serial killer Bloody Face. He's unfairly tossed into the asylum where he's tortured and tormented by Sister Jude and a former Nazi doctor, Dr. Arthur Arden. Yet despite all the poking and prodding by humans and aliens, Kit managed to survive. In doing so, he also made sure the people he loved were safe as well. While his complicated love story with Alma and Grace was far from traditional, Kit proved how powerful his devotion to others could be. He would do absolutely anything for those he cared about. His strong will, loyalty, and ability to forgive was endearing from start to finish. He would even return to the asylum years later and befriend Judy Martin, the same person that punished him years prior. He cared for her and took her into his home, providing her with the family that she needed. By the end of the season, Kit battles with cancer but doesn't die. In fact, those aliens returned to Earth to check in on their favorite human. Turns out they missed him too much, so they re-abducted him, leaving his fate one of the show's biggest unsolved mysteries. One thing's for sure, we hope Kit pops back up in a future season of AHS, or the spin-off series, so that we can finally find out why those aliens were so obsessed with him. That'll do it guys, so what do you think of our ranking? Hit me up with your ranking in the comments below, and let me know who we should spotlight next. Thanks so much for watching guys, and we will see you soon.